Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. How to thrive amid the digital marketing chaos that we're facing right now. My suggestion to you, adapt or die, right? The reason why I'm saying this is because Marketing is a constantly and rapidly evolving field. So as coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs, we need to keep up in order to remain competitive and profitable. We have to adapt if we want not only to survive, but to thrive. Now, it's, uh, it's like the elephant in the room. You know, life has been wild recently, hasn't it? COVID-19, crazy governments, uh, all these mandates coming in left, right, and center. And the my favorite part, millionaires being made overnight. And it's in this sort of environment, it takes smart operators like yourself to actually gain an edge so you can scale your business to the next level. Now, as a coach, consultant, or service business owner, it has become more difficult than ever for you to actually stand out in the crowd. Now, you might be asking your question, how do I attract new leads on a regular basis? How do I turn these leads into paying clients? And how do I get maximum bang for your advertising buck? Now, these questions can be difficult to answer, especially if you're not tech savvy or you don't have a team that can help you out. And I'm really excited to contribute to you succeeding in an entirely different life. And I'm excited to have that potential that you have, um, you know, inside of you and so that you can build a business that's profitable and enjoyable, especially in the next 90 days. And I want you to do something truly great and something that's important, especially for yourself and others and the world as a whole. So like I said earlier on, you know, we're dealing with a rapidly evolving field. And in this podcast, I really want to help you to remain competitive and also profitable. Okay. And the key to doing this is to proactively adapting now and forever. And knowing that where we are now going into and the world we are now entering into is a totally different world than the one we left before the pandemic hit, okay? So when it comes to marketing, far too many coaches, consultants, or entrepreneurs, they actually just settle in a comfortable rut where they're just doing the same thing and getting increasingly diminishing returns. You know, they have this statement, um, especially here in Australia, where they say, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know what I mean? Why break something that is not, why fix something that is not broken? And this leads to less exposure and declining revenue. You know why? Anybody who's got a pair of sweatpants, um, a laptop and a t-shirt can call themselves an entrepreneur these days. So how are you then going to be standing out from the sea of me too, uh, wannabes out there that also have the same alphabet soup, um, you know, of credentials that you possess. So often this happens slowly over time and we get moved into, um, you know, mediocrity. And until it hits a crisis point where they, you know, coaches and consultants actually finally realize they have to take massive action and get back on track. Now, this is not going to be easy because you're now faced with those me too, um, you know, want to be coaches and consultants out there and you're wondering to yourself, how can I then grow my business and compete, um, you know, with these other want to be players out there? Because the biggest problem is as a coach, consultant or entrepreneur, you know, marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You go from hiring and managing new staff, balancing books and driving growth and a whole lot more 
um, of other things that require your attention on a daily basis. And it actually feels like a constant balancing act where you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once. And at the end of the day, your real goal, you know, if you're a seasoned professional like I suppose you are, is just to help your clients. You know what I mean? You just want to spend as much time as possible changing people's lives and solving people's problems. And you don't want to waste countless hours each week trying to navigate the complex world of online marketing. You know, and you certainly don't want to spend yet another minute on the phone having to beg people to hire your services because maybe they haven't heard much about you or trust you enough with their hard-earned cash. But uh, unfortunately, you don't have to go through all of this. Well, I know I don't, but I still have a long list of clients who want to work with me. Not because I'm a genius and not because I'm a master of persuasion either. It's only because I follow a simple system that works, which is why I want to show you how to get high ticket leads on autopilot using our online prosperity method. Okay. But before we get into the method and everything else, I just want to ask you, are you on Facebook at all lately? Or do you operate a Facebook page um, that you're hoping to generate leads from or, you know, use as a branding uh, tool for your business? Um, yeah. Just So did you say you own a Facebook page? Let me tell you something. Run for the hills. We are all doomed. Run for the hills. You know, a few weeks ago, or just recently, um, Facebook changed their name to Meta. And they also sneakily changed, um, you know, their algorithm. And it caused a lot of gnashing of teeth and pulling of hair and cries of dismay amid uh, brands and people that depend on Facebook for free traffic. Now, here's a long and short of it. You know, if you're selling stuff, people won't see much of your posts on Facebook at all. And instead, there's like, they only start seeing posts from, you know, family and friends. So from here onwards, God help us all. Because seriously, think... Um, you know, the way, <laughs> the way the announcement came in, you'd seriously think that they announced a plan to inject all people with like the Zika virus or the coronavirus or something like that. You know what I mean? And what people fail to realize is this, this is actually wonderful news. And here's why, you know, cause it's getting competitive out there, you know? Um, okay, fine. It's always been competitive out there, but it's really competitive now. Like I mentioned, anybody can just start their business and get away with it. And it's only getting worse. And the reason why there's such a low uh, barrier of entry for people to get online and actually start becoming coaches and, and consultants and start getting attention or even selling stuff to your target audience, which is causing a lot of confusion to our markets that are already defined out there. And it's no different on Facebook, you know, because any knucklehead with an internet connection can create a business page and start posting maybe inspirational posts or whatever to gain fans, readers, and start pitching to your customers. And if they don't um, maybe successfully steal your customers, it's still bad news because they're just causing a distraction, which is offering... Um, you know, these customers, yet another avenue or yet another reason to not look at your stuff because you want all eyes on you all the time. So where does the good news come to play? Well, this is very good news because the instant dissemination of free attention that Facebook just caused is now giving extra power to advertisers. How? Well, if all the free posts just, you know, of competing brands are given less weight, what are we left with? Posts from friends and from advertisers. And if you know the best way to generate wealth is to turn advertising into profit. And guess what? If you're using um, a platform like Facebook to advertise, then a whole bunch of your competitors just got wiped out. Right. So a lot of people who depend on free 
might make money for a little while, but you be sure the real deal later on as you know the audience stops receiving their posts and um you know their memes that they're putting out there so facebook's devolution creates uncertainty amongst those that have no strategy um within their marketing place because like i said i mean obviously when i asked earlier you probably didn't nod your head or anything but do you have a facebook page nod your head or shake your head if you've got a facebook page okay because facebook was once a dream come true for coaches consultants and uh small business owners but if you ask some of um some of them today they've got a very different answer you know because after facebook launched um you know pages for brands a lot of coaches and consultants they jumped on board and they learned that they could quickly build an audience of highly engaged um, fans who could see nearly everything that they posted and it didn't take long before social media um, you know the, the the social media giant started racketing all this uh, organic reach down okay so as I mentioned earlier on it's even lucky that coaches and consultants receive one percent of their audience um that are actually seeing most of their posts and it's forcing them to rely on paid ads like i've mentioned uh to reach the audience they or they've already worked super hard to earn but first big problems don't even end with the depth of um organic reach you know even their advertising platform has become increasingly plagued with problems now uh, i don't know if you've been seeing lately they've been targeting uh, the wrong people and um there's been an infiltration of like uh russian spies that are um commanding and changing um you know political views of people etc etc and the company has chosen to replace most of their customer service staff with ai you know but the ai isn't quite ready for people yet you know, there's people like myself who post uh, regularly and we post really um, positive uh, content, yet we still get banned or our reach doesn't really get out there because, um, you know, AI doesn't have emotional intelligence. So coaches and consultants who are forced to um, start running paid ads to make up for, you know, the loss in this organic reach are now facing a new and ridiculous challenge. Because Facebook's AI gets it so wrong so often that despite even completely complying to the terms of service, some ads are rejected, some pages and groups are deleted, and some ad accounts are permanently shut down. And it's just causing so much kerfuffle that it's now like, you know what, you don't want to be at the mercy of a social media giant in order for you to reach your target audience. Okay, so when this all happens, there's no one to talk to, literally, and typically no way to appeal any of the decisions because they don't even know which AI or what uh, parameters or what community, um, uh, you know, problems have been caused out there because now this has now caused a lot of coaches and consultants, even some who were once the most vocal advocates about the platform to completely change their opinion and, um, you know, on being on, on it being a, a viable marketing platform. So when you figure all of this, along with um, the recent move by Apple to actually really fight against um you know the reach of facebook because if maybe you're lying under a rock or some sort of um misinformation place or as they as the kids of these days call it fake news apple is waging a not so quiet war with facebook where they are actually uh making it hard for for facebook pixels to retarget apple users okay and this is now becoming a very big uh, problem for people that were relying, um, you know, on these tools in order to reach a, a, a targeted audience. OK. And, you know, throughout, um, you know, the, the lockdowns and everything else, especially here in Australia, there was a growth tra tra trajectory of um, um, a, a social media platform where you I don't quite know how it works, but uh, it's called Clubhouse. 
And there's also been recent lawsuits by the Department of Justice against the Facebook platform itself. And I think that's one of the reasons why they've actually changed their name. So it's easy to see why Facebook, which was once a dominant, uh, um, you know, marketing uh, platform is quickly slipping away and it's simply no longer the utopia it once was. So from a practical standpoint, we should never have relied so heavily on Facebook in the first place. And if your business is running through the Facebook platform and it's one of the only, um, you know, um, sources of your lead generation, I, I, I think as the topic of the podcast today, you need to adapt or die along with the, with the platform itself. Because the platform has even rejected its own name and chosen yet another name and is now looking into, um, you know, what they call the murder vase because they've ruined the real life that we have here, All right? So any single channel or any, you know, marketing space shouldn't be uh, the bead and handle for your lead generation practices. You know, as someone who's got deep roots in the search industry, because I don't know if you quite know, uh, I run a digital agency uh, called Live Long Digital, where we basically help uh, small to medium businesses and coaches to explode their businesses using digital marketing strategies. All right. And as someone who's got really deep roots in the search industry, I've seen firsthand the devastation that can be caused if you over rely on one single channel each time. And this happened when Google released, um, you know, one of their major algorithm updates. Um, I think it was Penguin. And um, it's, it's, it's quite sad when all that you've worked towards just gets wiped off because you haven't actually diversified, you know, your lead generation efforts. So this is why customer data and relationships are critical moving forward. Otherwise, if you don't adapt to what I'm about to say, you're going to die along with the, uh, these Facebook, um, I mean, these, uh, social media platforms, you know, cause look at this Facebook's arbitrary bans on you know, your pages, your groups, your ad accounts, or even personal accounts have something abundantly clear to a lot of uh, coaches, consultants, and um, small business owners. And it's this, it's a foolish not to own your own customer data. And I'm going to repeat this. You are not building a business if you don't own your own customer data. Right? Like we did earlier on. Do you own your own customer data? I want you to shake your head um, if you don't and nod your head if you actually do own your customer data. Good work. Now, it's critical because it's how you maintain these relationships regardless of what else uh, is going on in any particular channel. You know, this has highlighted the crucial importance of email marketing because in addition to the ability to communicate with your customers literally at any time that you feel like, it also gives you the ability to export your data and take it to another platform is if another platform decides, uh, you know, not to play ball with you. So email marketing now creates a different relationship with your um, customers than what ads do because it's if it's done right, you know, this whole email marketing thing, it can actually help you create a more personal relationship, okay? Instead of people skipping your ads, people might actually save your emails for later so that they have something to read, um, you know, when they're bored or when they are um, uh, you know, in between or, or when they're commuting or something like that. Now, the key here, um, you know, for at least some of the emails to come from a person within your business, all right? Not to just come from a generic info address or, you know, or, or a contact or engage or something of that nature, okay? It is also important that's, that these emails are written in a natural way and engaging style. Remember, you are dealing with human beings that are just wanting to get more information. And if they do get that information, it helps them uh, create relationships with yourself and do business 
with you. All right. One other thing that you can actually diversify, um, you know, your reach out to the audience there is by what we're doing right now, a podcast, you know, because podcasts have continually grown rapidly because you control the narrative, you control uh, the platform and, and the podcast is not, um, you know, just... Um, um, you know, let, let to just stay on one platform. Our podcast is on uh, Spotify, is on Apple, is on Stitcher, and I think uh, we have it on Amazon as well, um, etc. So there's a podcast magazine um, that's run by a guy called Steve Olsha. Um, he says that as recently as 2006, only 22% of Americans had even heard of what podcasting was. Fast track to today, that stat has skyrocketed to 75% based on the industry's current trajectory. So that data indicates that the number of podcast listeners will actually reach 160 million by 2023, which is in, in the next couple of years, depending on what year you're listening to this podcast. All right. So despite the growing number of podcasters, I still see a tremendous opportunity for coaches, consultants, and small business owners to actually leverage a podcast to grow their business. There's something unique about the human voice that actually creates a really strong connection when you hear somebody speak um, compared to simply reading their words. Because I continuously tell of my story of how I was born in a small town in Zimbabwe and, you know, how when we were growing up, life was so tough and we didn't have a lot of money and hope. But... I had somebody come uh, from Australia who changed the trajectory of my life. I wouldn't be able to continuously repeat this story if I was just writing about it. All right. So if you look at, um, you know, podcasting giants like Joe Rogan or maybe Pat Flynn or Tim Ferriss, they've built empires around this concept. And recently, Joe Rogan actually had um, Spotify pay him a hundred million dollars to move all his content just to be on Spotify. Now, can you imagine podcast is now a hundred million dollar entity when it only just started not less than uh, 10 years ago. All right. So thousands and thousands of people are now leveraging podcasts to grow their business. It could be something that you could um, actually start getting into. Like for real, it is super, super simple. I wish you could see me right now uh, recording this podcast. The headphones I have on are my daughter's headphones. I'm using a mic, a really simple microphone. It's called the Blue Ayeti. And I'm just recording into my computer using a free program called Audacity. So I just make sure that I don't make any uh, mistakes or anything. And then my team just puts together the intro and the outro. And voila! You're listening to me every single day. I show up um, in your podcast platform of your choice and I literally control the narrative and I'm not waiting for Facebook or any other social media platform to determine who is going to listen to my podcast or not. All right. So you can actually start creating, um, you know, powerful relationships with your audience. The reason why this is, is because it's like having a conversation. You know how many times I've asked you to, to stop and pause and for you to engage with what I'm saying, etc., etc. And also the fact that most podcasts are unscripted. So you're actually getting the host, um true and authentic self like right now i mean you, you're talking to me you me baby you know and it's easy to see how podcasts um will help build powerful relationships with your audience because we literally just having a conversation here right this is when you you have to respond back to me and say yeah yeah we're having a, a conversation we're having a conversation right you see at the end of the day you can have fun with this as much as you want right so if you can't Go if you if you can't do podcasts, you can try and do this with video. Just put yourself in Zoom and make sure you've got adequate lighting. Record that. Voila, you've got a piece of content that you can actually uh, start creating strong relationships. Um, you know, with your audience at then. Okay, but the point isn't that we need to be using podcasts. 
um, you know, just to spray and pray with our marketing. The point is that regardless of the channel, we need to be focusing on building and nurturing authentic relationships with our audience, both because people expect it and because a podcast will be the easiest way um, for people to get a ping or a, a highlight that you you've added new content and that you are relevant and you've got the authority, um, you know, to show up every single day and help them solve their problems. Okay. So if you get anything from this podcast today, diversica- diversification of marketing is no longer optional. All right. So like I mentioned in 2012, I actually watched Google unleash the gnashing of teeth that I mentioned earlier on when they came up with the penguin update, you know, with zero regards of whatever collateral damage um, that was in their way. They were crushing hundreds and thousands of small businesses in the process, you know, just like COVID. You know, just like how the government's decided, yep, yeah, shut you down so you don't have a, a storefront. If you had an online presence, none of that would have mattered, okay? So while some coaches and consultants, you know, had admittedly used, um, you know, some unquestionable link building tactics with their SEO, a great many were simply caught up as false positives um, in an overzealous attempt to combat what the search engine deemed to be an acceptable marketing practice. Just like, doesn't this sound familiar? The government just shut down everyone, uh, even people that didn't even have to deal with customers, etc. So as a result, these businesses were instantly made invisible because people couldn't find them on Google. And you know, Google actually controls a massive 62.2% of all the search market, um, you, know, uh, ser- you know, search engine market. And to put this in perspective, I don't mean that they simply lost their ranking for particular keywords. I mean, I mean that they were completely removed from Google's index. So you, you couldn't even find them even if you searched them by company name. So a few businesses had to scrap their domain and start all over from scratch and losing years and years of hard work and marketing dollars and countless more uh, driven completely out of business just because of Google's actions. And we've already talked about how Facebook has been playing the same kind of games with businesses for for the last several years. But this issue is bigger than Facebook or Google, all right? So many businesses have found themselves scrambling to escape the bleak and desperate situation where their primary, and in most cases, only marketing channel was suddenly just yanked out from under them and forcing them to completely start over. And I don't want you to go through that, okay? I don't want you to go through the burden of having to start all over again and, um, you know, you know, do stuff that, you know, you, you could have avoided if you diversified your marketing. And I don't want you to misinterpret me or my intent here. Yeah. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use Facebook or Google. I mean, both still play a very important role in your marketing if properly utilized. But what I'm saying is that you should not be overly reliant on any single channel. Okay. Ideally, you should leverage, you know, the number of marketing channels together and both, um, you know, maintaining whatever exposure or omnipresence that you have. But most importantly, protect yourself from the damage that comes when a platform shuts down or shuts you out and you don't want to be left wanting. All right. So if you're using any of this organic search, paid search, organic social, paid social, email marketing, outbound sales, print marketing, affiliate marketing, podcasting, video marketing, all these uh, tools that you can use in your put in your toolbox so that you can actually adapt to the new uh, online um you know, landscape. And the key is to utilize at least three different channels at any given time to drive exposure and branding and eventually sales for your business. But also to use these channels to create force multipliers. All right. We can talk about that in another podcast. And once you've got 
and established um you've established a solid position you want to begin implementing additional channels because you don't want to be found wanting or when the algorithm changes and you've got nowhere to hide okay so in other words let's say you choose to implement an organic search uh, paid social and email marketing you might encourage your website visitors to subscribe to your email list and you run paid ads on um, Facebook to drive visitors to your website and then you use your email marketing to drive engagement to your social channels um, and search for your company on Google. All of these actions used together will help you grow, first of all, your email list and while at the same time, there will be increased engagement on your social media and it will actually boost a social proof and that organic reach that you're yearning for. And the increased brand search will actually improve your overall SEO uh, and organic rankings, okay? So you don't want to just utilize one activity. You want to integrate all of them and not be overly reliant on one particular channel because hey grand opening grand closing so when you diversify your marketing in this way you reduce or eliminate the impact um you could feel when you have been forced with maybe major changes in one channel but also you make your marketing exponentially more effective and this actually creates a powerful snowball effect where the results are increasingly compounding over time and results after all are the bottom line okay so now it's your turn i want you to discover how you can grow your service business from two hundred thousand to two million in just two years and i want to save you some time right now because the online prosperity method can be tailored to help any service business explode in growth so that means any coach or consultant can actually achieve the same mind-blowing success that we've helped our clients to achieve so if you um keen on finding out more and um seeing the marketing lessons that we've learned from over 450 uh, businesses that we've worked with and all the major platform opening and shutting down i encourage you to book a consultation with me and you find the consultation on livelongdigital.com.au forward slash o PB. But let me tell you something, man. My client list is often full, and my client, uh, my cal- my 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 calendar is always booked out weeks or even months in advance. So, um, just let me know how I can be of help to you. And um, yeah, I want to work with you. I really want that you uh, get business and you create a business that is profitable and enjoyable. But remember, like I said right at the start of this podcast. Adapt or die. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level www.community.livelongdigital.com.au